So you also had a recent study, um, kind of going back to the 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 resolving of the inflammation um, aspect. What I think is very relevant in you know our our twenty twenty one world that we live in. <laughs> COVID world. Oh yes, the COVID <laughs> world, um, where we have a, a, a pathogen that is um, in some people causing a very bad cascade of inflammation. Right. Um, so you published a study looking at the omega three index. Right. And COVID-19 associated mortality. Right. Right. We did that with uh, colleagues here in L.A. I don't know which way I'm pointing. Yeah. but I probably should have said the pilot preprint. It hasn't actually, has it been peer reviewed? It's not been peer reviewed? Or oh, no. It's it, peer reviewed it published and published, published in okay. January. It's published right. in January. Um, yeah. And it, it was a pilot study because we only had access to data from 100 people. Um, which was too bad, but we did have omega-3 index levels in 100 people that have been admitted to Cedar sinai in L.A. with uh, COVID. <clears throat> and so we asked the question, well, you know, is there any relationship between how they did, did they live or die, and their omega-3 levels? And it, it turned out if we looked, and again, the distribution of omega-3 levels was very narrow. The, the, you know, like, I think it probably went from... Uh, a low of three to a high of five, something like that. You know, but the distribution was was narrow, so we didn't be, weren't able to see. You know, oh, the people that had an eight percent didn't really. Nobody there in the study had an eight percent. So, we we looked at the people who had the highest quartile of omega three levels, the twenty five percent highest compared to everybody else who was lower, and those people uh, were really. Uh, half as likely to die as people who had, but, and it was 0 0.07 p-value, so it wasn't statistically significant by standard metrics, but in the race to understand what we can do about COVID, we'll put up with a slightly non-significant strong trend in the right direction with good biology behind it to explain it. Um, another paper's come out from Chile, it's just confirming the same thing. They saw the same thing. Okay. What about um, Japan? Do you know what their because they're because their omega three index is higher? Yeah, I know. Do you know their mortality? I know a group um, has looked at this worldwide, and they looked at uh, WHO data on COVID death, and they looked at reported fish intake on in the countries, and they did it by six different regions around the world, and what they 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 showed, you know the the higher the, the average fish intake, the lower the risk of death from COVID. Okay, it's hard to, hard to know it's so many variables right, there. Right, of course. <laughs> uh, but just, it, it, it sings the right song. Um, what that paper, that specific paper, was most, most interesting to me about was not this worldwide population thing, which was just their introduction. Their, I, they were doing in silico experiments looking at the, the spike protein on COVID, and they found that there's two conformations, an open and a closed conformation. And um, if it's open, then it can interact with the receptor. receptor yeah. If it's closed, it can't. Right. If you got high, they found that DHA, again, in silico experiments, if it's present, will hold that thing in a closed position. The, you know, terrible effects of you know, SARS-CoV-2 infection go through ACE receptor, and because the downregulation of that receptor occurs when the, the spike protein binds to it, it okay. through endocytosis pulls it into the cell and it causes downregulation, which disrupts the whole renin angiotensin system and so, lung yeah, injury. That's a mess. I mean, heart injury. Exactly. That's a big mess. Yeah. So, so anyway, this is you know take this with a grain of salt, but because it was in, in silico experiment, because they also showed that linoleic that acid did the same thing. I mean, oh, that's really? what that's what prompted them to look at DHA. Somebody else had published linoleic acid had the same kind of effect, uh, potentially effect, and so they looked at DHA. And that's an omega six fatty acid for people Correct. that are um, not yeah. aware. It, it's just, it's the classic omega six, right? So not all omega six are bad. Okay. <laughs> well, that is that is a very. Um, I'll send you that paper. Thank you. Yeah, I mean the, the fact that both DHA and linoleic acid could keep the spike protein in any, Yeah, so I mean, again, a completely different mechanism than suppressing inflammation. This would actually suppress infection, if it was true. And, well, not it would also suppress, um, you know, 
negative outcomes, yeah, yeah, severe right. outcomes totally. through the renin-angiotensin system, like that whole thing not happening, like the yeah, like yeah. The, the bad stuff. 